What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigal fail, sisoke. Once as Amal saw, that is African Nasty. and welcome to episode 23 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamandungwa Kumalo. We're on day 48 of the national lockdown. I know that President Ramaphosa will be addressing the nation at half past eight, so that's literally after the show. This evening's episode is one for the property investors or the wannabe property investors. Uh, we'll be exploring APSA's buy-to-let proposition. So if you ever wanted to know how you can best grow your investment property, especially when you're doing rental properties, then this episode is for you. And to help us understand what this proposition is all about, how you can actually apply for it, and all the ins and outs of how you can grow that property portfolio, I'm joined by Miguel Martins, who's the Head of Product Management at APSA Home Loans. Miguel, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Awesome, and thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to it. So I think, Miguel, maybe let's start with, you know, when this product was launched last year, I got so excited. I mean, as somebody who already has a couple of properties in her portfolio, this was the type of product that I thought is just what the market needed. It's a first of its kind, and it's the future rental offering. If you could perhaps tell us a little bit about how it actually came about into the market. Well, maybe a little bit of context. Uh, so so in, in, in the home loans team, I specifically look after the investors when it comes to our, our, our home loan population. And myself and my team, we spend a lot of time thinking hard about how we improve our home loans by today's offering to investors. We, we, we talk to our credit colleagues a lot. We look at other markets. And, we, and, and, and of course, we speak to investors quite a bit. And I probably speak to uh, probably an investor every other day. And I'm often in front of investors. So we take a lot from that. So being an investor myself uh, and having gone through uh, and, and really intrinsically understanding the challenges of investors, um, what I found was that investors very easily buy their first or maybe even second investment property. And, and often to, to, to purchase their property, they obviously uh, they finance it using their salaries if they, from their normal jobs, and then they probably use rental income. Uh, from their invest, from their first investment to to add to their income for their second to, for financing on their second investments, the challenge is that they often reach a glass ceiling. They run out of affordability. Yeah. So I've I've I, I, I've gotten going. I've got a great little portfolio. I bought two little two two great investments, and all of a sudden it just stops. And I can probably have, I've got affordability of 
a couple hundred thousand if I if I go and do those the calculations. But actually, I'm looking to purchase my next uh, apartment or, or property, and actually I need eight hundred thousand, a million, whatever it is. And and and, and, we, and we took a step back and we saw that this was a, a, a real need in the market. So just a, a statistic: when when we go look at the market we see that more than 80% of property investors in the market, and that's people who own two or more properties, own two properties. So very, very few actually break through the barrier of three, maybe four properties. And then you've got very, very few percentage-wise that actually own more than five or, or, or 10. More than 10 properties is less than one or 2% in the market. So there's, there's, we can definitely see that glass ceiling um, in, in the market. Um, so what we did is um, we we looked overseas, we looked in the UK where they've got their buy to let solutions. We looked at a couple in in Australia and and, and and other markets that we thought were similar to ours. And then we even looked at home uh, at commercial property financing, and we looked at how they uh, look at financing. And that's where this concept of applying the future rental for a property to finance the, the property in a home loans environment. That's where that came from. And, you know, I, oftentimes when people um, want to, to certainly grow their portfolio, I think we might theoretically want to use future rental, but we probably don't even know how to go about doing it or how it works. Perhaps if you can explain to us how exactly uh, the future rental model essentially works. No. So, so and, and, and you said it just now. So when investors go out in the market, uh, one of the things they do is they they choose a particular suburb or location. They 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 look at targeting a one or two bedroom apartment as an example, and 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 they understand that that two bedroom apartment is going to net them eight thousand rand a month, and they do their calculations and they, and they understand they, that they can really afford to buy for for X, for six seven hundred thousand, uh, and that's where it makes sense for them. Um, so they've done all that homework. So that when they go then to to apply at the bank. Uh, the, the, often the application form doesn't allow for that. So the, the way the APSA application uh, works is that you would apply normally as if you're applying for a normal uh, home loan application. You would include your, your salary, any existing rental income, but then you would also include the expected rental income on that application, that 8,000 Rand figure that I, that I suggested just now. When that goes through and it goes through our assessment, a credit manager looks at your application. They look at the at the area that you're investing in, the type of apartment, and they do some very clever calculations in the back and they look at looking at averages in the area and our whole formula. And then they apply a portion of the future rental income to, to your um, income and where you could afford 300,000 before, you can now afford 600,000 because of that additional or even more depending on on the value so it really does help investors um, rise above the, the the challenge or the hump of, of the existing affordability so i know we now have you know people at home who are watching and thinking okay this sounds like the type of you know product that i want to uh, get my hands on or certainly apply for, what are the requirements for them to be able to even approach APSA and start with that application? Great. So there's actually only one requirement. You need to be an existing investor already. You need to have control or have, 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 have in your ownership two properties. And the reason why we, um, we, we put that requirement in is because we are leveraging the, 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 the fact that, that the investor is going to be um, enhancing their income with the future rental income. It wouldn't be a good idea for a first-time investor who's never had to go and find a tenant before, place a tenant, manage a tenant, to include that additional uh, um, uh, monthly payment, but then not be able to find a tenant. So we really are looking for investors who've had the experience of finding tenants, we can take on uh, this additional uh, financing and then very quickly um, tenant the property and start earning, earning rental income. 
So Miguel, you know, you've said that you essentially need to have two properties. Is that two properties in addition to the property that you're living in or two rental properties? Because I can already, you know, see people at home thinking, okay, maybe I have this one property that I'm staying in and I've got the second one that's a rental property. Does that already qualify me? Or is it you have to have the two that are already rental properties themselves? So that's, that's where we're quite flexible. So you need to have two properties under your control. So that can be the, the, the property you live in, your primary residence, and it can be one other investment property. Those properties can be in your name or in a PTY or trust that you're either a trustee or a, or a director of. So the, the intent there is, to, is for the applicant to show that they understand the, the requirements for managing a property. One thing you don't need is you don't even, even need to show a lease. So it's all about um, the, the, what that suburb, what the average rental that that suburb achieves for that type of property that you want to finance. So I think essentially one of the big things with that one, I mean, as you mentioned, that is it, you, you don't even necessarily look at the lease agreement that might be in place. It's that you essentially take a view on the area that an investor is, um, you know, has bought in, but also perhaps even the, the a view on the investor themselves. Um, what type of, I'll say, uh, what type of support do you actually then provide to that particular investor that you would be dealing with? Oh, great. So, so, so as part of our strategy in, our, uh, in, in, in supporting investors to grow their portfolios, um, some, uh, some time back, we, we decided to move away from just pure being, being a pure home loan financier to actually providing a full solution. And um, as part of that, we've actually partnered up with uh, some key brands and partners in the market to help us do that. And those include uh, TPN, who are a tenant credit bureau, and Trafalgar, a property management, who are very experienced in managing properties and have a significant rental portfolio that they manage themselves as well as uh, sponsoring um, the South African Property Investors Network, where, where uh, we're able to really interact with, with, with investors. Um, but po possibly before I go down that road, I, I just wanna, if, 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 if I may, Zaman Tungwa, I wanna share an example of how the future rental income uh, really made a difference to an investor. And it's, it's, such, a nice, it's a, such a nice case study uh, that maybe we, we can discuss for, for a minute or two because it really demonstrates the power of future rental income. Would that be okay? Yes, that, that would be perfect. No, fantastic. So, so just after we launched, um, I came across an investor who was applying for financing with, um, with APSA Home Loans. And at the, at the time, the credits had, had put a condition in their financing that they had to sell one of their existing properties to be able to finance that next property they were looking at. And that next property was a, was, was a fantastic property, had a great, had a great rental, it, was, it already had a tenant in it. And that investor was really looking at, well, it was, it was in the process of, of putting their other property up for sale. But our, our Home Loans Express agent um, then suggested that they include the future rental income um, in their application. It went back to credit, when credit reviewed it, they, 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 the final decision was that they were able to now uh, finance and afford that additional property without having um, had to sell the previous property. So in, 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 in that case, that investor had hit their glass ceiling. Um, they were, would need to have had moved back one step to move forward two steps, that whole scenario. Uh, and now they're able to actually grow and, and, and have a much more a uh, profitable portfolio, a much more sustainable portfolio because of the future rental income. And, it, and, and that really, you know, often we design these things and it was really so, so fulfilling to see how this had really made a, a, a huge difference almost immediately in, in, in the life of that investor. And I thought it was just a great story to share in terms of exactly how this does work. I mean, I can, I think more than anything, as an investor myself, I can also appreciate uh, a product like this because of reasons like that. Because oftentimes as an investor, you certainly want to be adding more 
uh, properties, especially, especially depending on what your investment strategy is. You don't want to have to offload a property uh, because you want to acquire one or prematurely offload a particular property. So I think the fact that they were able to, to retain that particular property and still grow their portfolio and essentially stay in line with whatever their strategy was is actually so crucial. Miguel, I want us to take a quick break and when we come back, I actually want us to talk a little bit more about the partnerships that um, APSA has with the various stakeholders that you mentioned earlier and just how they come together in making sure that investors who opt for the future rental product uh, get the best value and that they also have different partners that they can um, you know, be be rest assured are part of the journey with them. And of course, if you're watching us at home, do send in your questions and comments about the APSA's future rental pro um, product, and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Miguel Martins, who's the head of product management at APSA Home Loans, is joining us this evening. We'll be back just after this. filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Once as Amal Saad, that is African Nasty. Welcome back to the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamandungwa Kumalo. Tonight, we're exploring APSA's buy-to-let proposition. And it seems I gave Miguel a promotion. Uh, Miguel Martins, of course, is joining me this evening. He's the Investor Product Manager at APSA Home Loans. Miguel, before the break uh, and before giving you a promotion, I did mention that I wanted us to talk about the partnerships that you, you mentioned. I mean, you mentioned that you've got a partnership with TPN. You've got a, a relationship with Trafalgar, as well as the South African uh, property investor network. Perhaps let's start with how TPN, you know, plays a role in ensuring that, um, you know, an investor who comes in and wants to take advantage of this new offering, how do they essentially come into the picture in ensuring that um, this is executed effortlessly? Yeah, no, fantastic. So uh, as you start getting into property investment, you start hearing about this concept of having a power team. And that's who you surround yourself with, whether it's a a great estate agent, um, a great builder, a great um, a, a great bank, or a great attorney to help you uh, manage and grow your your portfolio, and and we took that concept and we and we added that to our buy to let home loan, and 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 we went out and sought some great partners in the market to to help us go out to our customers with a more holistic solution, just beyond financing. Um, their investment purchase. 
So TPN and, 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 and the team there headed up by Michelle Dickens, the CEO, uh, are effectively a credit bureau. They're, they, they're a tenant credit bureau, which investors can, where investors can effectively log uh, the payments received from their tenants. And often we think of credit bureaus as these terrible places which really monitor bad behavior. But the nice thing about TPN is they monitor the good behavior as well. So as a tenant, you are paying your, your rent uh, over, over a couple of years, but you're not really getting any credit um, credit for it, any benefit from it. And, and, and TPN is able to, as a, credit, as a registered credit bureau, is able to demonstrate that you have managed to fulfill your commitments. So that's, that's where they began, but they offer so much more. Um, so if I, if I start at the beginning, uh, they have, offer a fantastic service that when our customers are viewing, are doing viewings with tenants, uh, off your cell phone, you can um, put in your prospective tenant's ID number and you receive an SMS with a, a summary of their credit score. From there, TPN also offers you what they call a lease pack, which is an up-to-date lease, uh, which is put together by, 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 by attorneys. And you can use that lease in confidence that uh, that lease will, um, will, will, will be binding on yourself and the tenant and will stand up in court if it's required. But it's better than something you purchase in a store or download uh, on some Google site. From there, they offer a free um, property management software uh, called Rentbook. And from there, you can load your properties, you can load your tenants, and at, at, at a point in time, you can you can manage your your and, and, and view and monitor your, your property portfolio, and then more recently TPN together with their attorneys uh, launched a um, a product called Rental Recovery Pack, yes. and it really had to do with uh, COVID nineteen, and and it's, it's it's a document where you have a tenant that uh, is having trouble um, with uh, with with the income, and you set up a um, uh, you, you, you agree a payment plan in terms of uh, their rent missed and how they're going to pay that back. This rent recovery pack uh, just documents and makes it all legal so that uh, the landlord and the tenant know where they stand when it comes to getting through the period we're in. So they, they really stay current they're on top of it and, and, and they're really great partners to have. And I think, you know, I'm so glad that you actually mentioned that recovery pack that they have and some of the services that TPN offers. We've actually spoken to Michelle uh, a few episodes ago where she did highlight, you know, what it is that the, the recovery pack seeks to do, particularly right now during the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the, 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 the thorny issues landlords and tenants find themselves in and making sure that as you navigate this Antarctic territory, both parties have a legal document that they can go back to in the event, for example, where they want to utilize the, um, the, the, the deposit for, you know, for aspects of this month's rent or future rental, or they want to, you know, give a discount. So I think services like that become so important, especially as you grow your portfolio. Now, Miguel, another relationship that, um, you know, APSA Home Loans has when it comes to the buy-to-let um, product is, is, of course, with Trafalgar. What role does Trafalgar play um, in ensuring that, you know, the investor has um, this great, you know, the, the investor starts using this product, but also has a, a managing company that they essentially are able to work with. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's so interesting. So um, a bit of research within the market um, is that the majority of landlords prefer to manage their own rentals. And that's where TPN comes in. But then there are those other landlords who would rather have uh, an agent manage their rentals, either because um, they, they, they'd rather focus on other parts of, of their property business or because they are location-wise, they're in a different city, a different region. And that's why we went to the market and we found, uh, and, and, and we contacted Trafalgar and, and we really uh, set up this partnership with them to be able to offer that partnership uh, or th th their offering to, to, our, to our landlords. And, and really the offering is um, sourcing tenants and managing tenants, and they offer a significant discount, um, half of what you'd normally pay uh, to, to the APSA customers. And it's as easy as arriving at Trafalgar, um, 
with uh, and applying to them to, to manage your property and, and just showing that you're part of uh, or that your property is a perhaps a home loan finance property and they'll extend that that discount what's key with our partners is that it was important that we tested them so yeah. i manage my own properties and i i use all of tpn's um, products i've had to use more more recently the rental recovery product it really helped me and it helps me to go out and and confidently uh, talk about our partnerships in terms of how we provide solutions uh, to our customers as i said uh, even today, I had three different conversations with investors. Just investors reaching out to me, uh, either either directly through APSA or, or through other through, through the other channels where, where, where we uh, um, are, are on. And I can confidently have these conversations and and, and confidently uh, uh, promote the likes of TPN and Trafalgar as great solutions for landlords out there. We are taking your questions and comments at home. So if you have any questions about the buy to let proposition from APSA Home Loans, you're more than welcome to um, send them. And I've already got questions coming in, Miguel. And the first one is, uh, let's, let's have the first one from Bruno Santos, who asks, I have two rented properties in my name. They are bonded, rented through rental agencies. The bonds are not with APSA. Can I still apply? Absolutely. So, so we, we, we definitely don't require them to be with APSA uh, um, for you to be able to get, uh, to, get, to get access to the future rental income. It really is about demonstrating the fact that you are comfortable with managing uh, multiple properties and whether they are uh, bonded with APSA or bonded with, with another bank, um, happy to take it on. Having said that, look forward to uh, having Bruno switch his uh, other home loans to APSA. I can talk about that as well. Okay, and, and I think that's Sorry, I had to do a pun there. <laughs> You're more than welcome to, I think, uh, uh, Miguel. Another question coming in from um, this time from Howard is, so he says regarding the scenario that you gave earlier, um, you know, about the investor, did they have to be buying as a PTY or can, or, or rather, or can that scenario also be applicable and continue growing in the same manner if uh, funded under personal capacity? And he goes on to ask, what are the odds of acquiring 100% bonds as they continue? Sorry, so, so in, in terms of, if I understand the question correctly, uh, in terms of offering, of, of achieving 100% bonds, that's still, that's still very possible. I think the market's moving and and uh, the, the, that will evolve, but uh, we still definitely apply, um, allow 100% LTVs. Of course, it's dependent on the investor and of course, and, and the property. So make sure that um, my advice to investors is always keep, make sure you, you maintain a great credit score, make sure that you manage your, your, your cash flow uh, well so that uh, the credit manager can see that you haven't got unnecessary expenses, etc. And of course, uh, properties. Make sure that you are uh, financing or purchasing properties in in good areas where where the rentals are sustainable. So I think that first uh, question we've essentially dealt with it. it was he was essentially asking if the properties need to be under a PTY or in your personal capacity. And you did mention that it, they don't necessarily have to be under a trust or a PTY. They can essentially be under your own personal name um, and they'll still be considered. And I suppose then, Miguel, the, the future. Absolutely. So the property that the investor would is looking at acquiring, would that property be in their personal name or would that need to be in a PTY? Either, either. So future rental income uh, uh, applies across uh, whether you're financing your personal name or in a PTY or trust entity. Ah, okay, I think perhaps that may have been the second component of his question. Now, one of the other, you know, stakeholders that you actually mentioned, and I'm sure that uh, other investors might want to know a little bit about this one, is the South African Property Investors Network. Perhaps tell us about APSA's involvement with SAPIN and how they see that relationship being very beneficial to investors. So, so we're so excited to be part of, or to be partnering with the South African Property Investors Network, or, or SAPN, as many people call them. 
um, that's a great platform for us to meet with investors, for investors to meet with us. Uh, I, I often go to their events and more recently uh, we, we, we're on their webinars and live streams and it's a great environment for investors to raise their needs, their challenges, uh, what they're dealing with. And I often take a lot of that back to the office and, uh, and, and it challenges me to think more innovatively about how we design products for investors. But more so, I find it's a, it's, 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 it's a very uh, rare opportunity for, for investors to have access to a bank and, and, and almost that inside, um, inside scoop in terms of how to solve their problems and, and, and how better to structure their, their finances. So we we're very happy to work with uh, Sapin um, and, and, and work with their, with their investors. Now, you know, so Miguel, a lot of people at home are watching us and they're thinking, okay, so I've, I've gotten an understanding of what this product is. I'm an investor. I certainly meet the requirements. I've got two or more properties and I want to essentially get the next property by using the, the future rental model. How do they go about applying and where do they actually apply? Okay, fantastic. So, so although this is a unique product and it's specifically for buy to let, the application form is a standard application form. So whether you're applying directly to EPSA or through, through a, a, one of our mortgage originator partners, it's, it's the same application. You'll just need to indicate on, on, on the application that you are including future rental income and that the property is an investment property. And the different applications, depending where it comes from, uh, will we'll indicate that in different manners. But otherwise, it's, uh, it's, it's a standard uh, application form and standard application process. And, and we try to make it as easy as possible uh, for the investor to, to be able to access it. And before I let you go, uh, Miguel, I mean, you were, you've been saying throughout our conversation that you often speak to a number of different investors uh, and a lot of them reach out to you almost on a daily basis. There's always a conversation you're having with investors. Could you perhaps share with us two things that, uh, you know, these investors typically tend to ask you? Sure. So, so I, I think about uh, two questions I was asked this week um, that, that, that often surprises me. Um, people don't realize, uh, investors are like, and, and homeowners are like, don't realize that they can access the equity in their properties. So over time, and, and let, let's not take the current situation, but o o over time, property values increase, whether it's 5% or whether it's 10%, but property values increase. Um, and it's possible for, it's possible for, um, properties, it's possible for, excuse me, for customers to access the equity in those properties through a further advance. And um, that's something that's happened quite, quite often and people don't realize it. Um, so we are sort of with the property that's worth a million rand, now it's worth 1.5. You can come to back to the bank, go through a normal application and access an additional half a million rand to be able to, to uh, apply for any purposes that, that you may have. And, and of this course, is my then, wife behind me. She's popping into the line. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of the things that we love. We, we are working from home. With these virtual, you know, sessions, is that anybody can walk in. If it's not your wife, it's the cat or your children. So we really do like how working from home lets us see people's, um, you know, loved ones. Um. So you know, Martin. So uh, so Miguel, I mean, there is one thing. Things interesting. Yes, it, no, it definitely does. I mean, I've seen so many people, you know, where some of their cats would come in and you're seeing a cat, you know, taking over the screen. Um, so I think your wife, your wife is miles better than a yeah. cat taking over um, this interview. So that is the one <laughs> question where, you know, when yeah. people ask you how they can unlock value. And of course, you, you, you said that the, one of the ways that you can access equity is perhaps using things like the future advance. What then is that second thing that investors typically ask you when they ask you a question? So this one's slightly different and it talks to homeowners comprehensive insurance. So whenever you take out a homeowner in South Africa, it's a requirement that you have building insurance or homeowners comprehensive insurance, right? Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is that within that insurance, um, at least EPSA's HOC, and I think for the most part, uh, other banks' uh, HOC insurance, is a, a, a insurance uh, for rental income. So in, in, the, in, the, in, in the incidents where 
your rental property is not able, is, is, um, it's flooded, there's a fire uh, or whatever other reason, and a tenant is not able to, to stay in the property, um, then, then there's insurance for that rental. You will still receive that rental um, for, for that property. So not only does insurance cover uh, the costs of repairing the property, the, the burst geyser that flooded the property, etc., but it also covers the rental um, that, uh, for, for that investment property. And it's, 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 it's a small clause, it's in there, it's in, it's in many of the uh, homeowners comprehensive insurance uh, policies, but it's, 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 it's a nice to know that you, there is actually that little value add um, in, in those, in, in those uh, policies. And that was something that uh, I must admit, I only found out a uh, uh, lot, lot last year. And, um, and I think it's, it's, it becomes a nice surprise for investors. Uh, we've, we've got another comment uh, from Howard, he's one of our uh, regulars, uh, and he says, I like Miguel, he's dissecting so much in so little time, bring more Miguel here, <laughs> and he's there, and he shared a, a clapping emoji. And another, another one, again from Bruno, he says, how do I get hold of Miguel? So if people want to reach out to you, how do they, or how do they reach out to the AFSA Home Loan team, if of course, uh, perhaps sharing your, your contact details is a bit much. <laughs> So, so happy if you share my email address, um, and uh, I'm not sure if you share that in, in the comments or wherever, but it's, it's miguel.martins at absa.africa, and, and happy to uh, get questions and queries from investors and happy to engage. Perfect. Thank you so much, Miguel, uh, for joining us this evening. It has been quite an insightful conversation, especially for those investors or want to be investors who are looking at growing their portfolio and perhaps might not know how to best go about doing it. I think, you know, the absence buy to let uh, proposition is the type of product that you want. The ability to look at future rental and take a view on it is so crucial, especially for those of us who want to, you know, exponentially grow our property portfolios. That's been Miguel Martins, who's the Investor Product Manager at AFSA Home Loans this evening. It has been a really great one. It's episode 23. Tomorrow we're back with episode 24. I know that the president will be addressing us shortly. I hope you are staying at home, still abiding by lockdown rules, and we'll be back again tomorrow evening. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it.
What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Once as Amal Sam, that is African Nasty.